Hey everybody, so uh, project five is the uh, the REST API project, the client server project, and we talked a lot about this a couple of weeks ago when I first introduced the assignment. Um, but it's been a couple of weeks, and I know people have been focused on other things. Um, and uh, you know, one of the and, and so when we did talk about it though, uh, we we explored what came out of the box with that with that Maven project that was created. And that was a REST API and associated client that modeled uh, a simple dictionary application with key value pairs. And the intent of, of that application is to give you an idea of how all the pieces and parts of a web application fit together. And this is what we talked about in class. We talked about the unit tests for the servlet that used Mojito. We talked about the integration tests that both invoke the command line and then also invoke the REST API client. Um, and, and I hope that sort of gave you a, a good sort of lay of the land for, you know, for this architecture right here where we have, you know, a a client and uh, and a server, but uh, I, you know we, we've heard from a couple of people on on Slack and just you know I know from uh, experience teaching uh, you know this the same kind of material before um, that it can be kind of hard to get off the ground with this uh, you know yes you have the dictionary application yeah it's not terribly complex but then how do you begin morphing that into your appointment book application? And uh, given that on Wednesday we talked about refactoring and how we can use uh, you know, a number of refactorings to evolve code, I thought it might be a, a good idea to walk you through how some of those refactorings can be applied to Project 5 to um, start moving your uh, the, the out-of-the-box dictionary application into something that will uh, create and ultimately manage appointments. So um, I'm uh, getting some time here on a uh, on a Saturday morning uh, to uh, sort of show you how we you know, how you might get started. Um, we'll be I'll be working in my uh, in my uh, Portland State Java Winter 2024 repository, I'm making these changes here, and I'll push them up. Um, feel free to use them, uh, or uh, just you know, feel free to take some inspiration, or feel free to ignore them, right? You know, so if you've already made good progress on Project Five, and uh, you think you have uh, a, a lot of stuff going, um, oh, this should be Project Five, shouldn't it? Well, I'll figure it out either way. Um, uh, it, th then you know, then then let me know. Or sorry, if you are making good progress, then you know, feel free to ignore this. So, um, as a reminder, you know, we we um, we, what we have out of the box is a uh, simple uh, web app that um, it has an appointments endpoint, and I think instead of taking an owner, it takes like a, a word and a definition um, for its uh, for its parameters. So. Uh, let's see here. Let me get that. Let me get that running again. I'm gonna go over here and let's see here. I think we're done with that window. Oh, yeah, here's a, a good place right here to run this. Um, so yeah. So if we um, run a Jetty Run, building everything and then if we go over to here and we open localhost 8080 appointments it might not have completely loaded yet so the web page might not be there or maybe it has oops hello oh i see there's nothing there der uh, if i just go to appointment book here's the index.html and as you'll recall if i then create a uh, word definition pair and submit it and then go back and then look at all the word definition. Right, you, you might remember all of this stuff, right, from the lecture. And if you haven't, actually go back and watch the screencast from whatever that was, week six. Yeah, that's where we talked about it, week six on yeah, Valentine's Day. So, okay, here's the application that we've, we've got right now. And what I want to do is I want to um, morph this into something that uh, deals with appointments instead. And um, so let's uh, let, let's see how we can do that. Um, now, if we look at our servlet, which I guess I don't own, it's servlet test. No, let's navigate it really quick here. Oops, nope, not that. <laughs> That's the request. The actual servlet is right there. 
Okay, our do get and do post deal with this word parameter and this definition parameter. And as uh, someone noted in class, um, uh, you know, asked, you know, hey, how do we get started? And one of the things I suggested is that instead of having a uh, dictionary of uh, string to string, we use the dictionary to store all of the appointment books. So um, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start making that refactoring here in the code, um, and uh, and I think I'll take it far enough, as far as creating. Uh, you'll be able to create an appointment book for a uh, an owner with a given name, and I don't know if we'll need to add appointments. We'll see how long that takes. Um, if there's time, maybe I'll I'll show that. But you, but I, hopefully by just doing some refactoring here, you'll get a, a better idea of how everything fits together. Maybe you know how to rename some things to get started, and then maybe you'll be able to add you know appointments on your own. So, um, I guess one of the first things I want to do is I want to change these parameters, right? Because I mean, out of the box is word and definition, but if you look at the assignment, it should be you know owner. And then um, maybe description. Let's see here. Where's the post? Yeah, well, we'll change it to owner and description will be the two parameters that we support. So I guess there will be an appointment um, in the appointment book, which is which is fine. So it'll be the description of the appointment and the owner for that uh, appointment book. So, OK, let's do some uh, refactoring. Actually, before I do so, I want to make sure that all of my uh, my tests run. So I will just uh, run all of these. I'll be using lots of keyboard shortcuts today, so that's nice and fast. Nice. OK, so now what I want to do is uh, I'll change this to owner. I'll change this to uh, description, That's the name of it, right? Yeah. So here, these are my URL parameters, and I'm going to change the names of these constants. Um, so I'm using the rename refactoring. Uh, actually, let's do that here, and refactor rename. And oh, even let's it tells me it should be called owner. That's nice of it. And then, uh, although I think I wanted it to be owner parameter, yeah. I want this to be owner parameter, just to be clear. Owner parameter, and change this to be definition parameter. I'm oh, sorry, description parameter. Nice. And notice that that modified all the usages of it. So not only the um, uh, in it modified it in the client in sorry in the servlet. It also modified it in the in the client. And in the test, um, in the IT test, so basically any place that I've referenced it. You know, thank you IntelliJ for uh, for doing all that stuff. And so then, okay, I'm just going to run my tests again. I'm going to run all my unit tests, and I'll also run my integration tests. Um, oh, although my integration test will probably fail because I haven't rerun the servlet. So you know what I'm just going to do? I'm just going to do a uh, maybe clean verify over here. W clean. Oops. Uh, clean verify. Make sure that's okay. Well, let's give that a minute to run in the background and check in on it. So all of this is a, a simple refactoring here, but you know the whole idea is that now um, just I'm just using the terminology that that I expect. Oh, and actually, same thing with like write definition and write all dictionary entries. This will have to change uh, clearly. Instead, it will be instead of write definition. I guess this will be. Um, yeah, I guess the, the, instead of writing definition, this will be um, write, yeah, sure, write appointment book. And, uh, oh, here's another place we can rename. This is not the word anymore. This is the owner. Oops. This will be the correctly spelled owner. And here, um, let's see here. If an owner isn't specified, I believe, does it say? What we should do, I think that should be like a 404 or some sort of missing parameter or something like that. So um, response.set status and then, um, shoot, what are we, where are those constants? Uh, HTTP server response, SC, okay. HTTP server response, 
um, servlet code not found, but I I don't know um, something in the 400s. So let's just do a 404, and then well I could convey a a better message a better error, but we'll skip over that for now because we're trying to go fast. Okay. Oh good, that was successful. So looks like that refactoring worked. Um, okay. So let's see here. Uh, and you know actually, and while we're so so I think we've um, We've made our uh, our get method. We refactored that to use a new terminology. Oh, and probably, and you know, we'll have to update this comment too. Um, now here in the do post, now uh, we'll take the owner parameter. We'll take the definition. Oops, the owner parameter. Let's we'll rename this variable here. And we will. Uh, There's not the definition anymore. This is the description. And now, well, we'll in, an, in a subsequent step, we'll change the dictionary. Um, we'll put in an appointment. We'll, we'll create the appointment book necessary and create a new appointment in it. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's see here. This is defined words as this probably isn't so interesting anymore. Oops. Um, well, we could just say something like, OK, these aren't words in dictionaries. This is owner. And this is, oops, this is description. Again, I'm using that rename refactor to just uh, change the name of the parameter, which also changes the usage of it. And so instead of defined uh, <coughs> words definition, we're going to say you know, uh, created a uh, new appointment in book for owner, and then just that's the description. And this is just what's returned in the uh, in the body of the of the post, so uh, it's not a big deal what it, what, it, what the actual string is. So I'll say um, created appointment. Okay. Yeah, this all dictionary entries deleted. Uh, we'll probably need that for. Um, well, since I'm in here, I might as well do it. So we'll say, um, this will be all appointment books deleted. And I'll just change that. Nice. And then require parameters. OK. This messages class is just, um, Oh, it just has a bunch of static methods in it that are used for formatting. And the nice thing about having this all in a method is that it makes it easier to test, right? So if we look at where this method is used, we'll see that it's used in like the uh, the integration, the REST client integration tests. Um, yeah, so that it just again makes it easier to you know we get some exception and make sure that the exception um, from that method uh, from that sorry the exception has a message that's formatted you know, using uh, using that missing required parameter method. Okay, we got some more stuff there. Let me run my tests again just to make sure everything still works. Because let's see here. I'm just looking at the other classes, if there's anything else that we're ready to change yet. I don't think there is. If we look at things like pretty printer. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, what will well, eventually, I mean, this will just be replaced with your pretty printer that you wrote for project three. So um, that's probably what you'll need to do. I don't have an implementation of the pretty printer, so I'll just, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll just do something different. I'll, just, I, I'll Actually, this yeah. What I'll do is um, sort of like in the next phase of refactoring, I'll introduce the appointment book and appointment classes, and then then use them here. Um, however, I think the format, the actual text format, well, I don't know if I'll change that or not. I I might just sort of leave it the same because I mean it will work. Because um, remember, we're just pretty printing a single appointment book, so maybe that's just what I'll do here because it's easy to because uh, I want to make the minimal number of changes. Um, because uh, I want to work in small batches, and I kind of want to get back to my weekend at some point, so uh, I will. Uh, I'll just be doing that. Oh, looks like something failed. Good to know. Oh, right, there's probably a test that needs to go away. Uh, initially, server contains no dictionary entries. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. Okay, let's go take a look at that. Oh, that was even a servlet test too. I would have caught that if I had run the. Um, 
if I'd run the unit tests, which I probably should have done before. Well, anyway, no matter. So yeah, we probably need to go now and just start, start changing some... Actually, we need to change terminology here. So let's see here. Initially, a server contains no entries. So when we just do a get with nothing, it's supposed to return 200. Oh, well... Is that okay? Oh, because there's nothing ever written? Yeah, okay, I don't think this test is valid anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. I mean, or I guess I could I could verify that it's... Yeah, I actually, yeah, what do we do? A not found? Maybe we should do that. And this is what Makita was telling me, right? It expected set status to be called with 200, which was the value that I had there before, but instead it was called with all these other things, including 404. So I'll just run this again. Okay, that's happier now. Okay, um, but let's see here. Uh, but let's say, you know, contains no, I'm just gonna, appointment books, appointments. And um, this will be add one, add one appointment to appointment book. Now, you know, I'm very deliberately doing all of these refactorings, you know, working in these uh, small f uh, phases, and this is just actually helping me to sort of rem remind myself what all, what this application is all about, because it's been a while. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, again, I'm refactoring, I'm not changing any behavior, although I did change something with regards to the um, that 404 right there. Um, but I'm not, oops. Um, but I'm not uh, doing much of anything else. But what I am doing is I'm, again, I'm sort of molding my code, I'm morphing my code to then you use the right terminology, and so then I just have a better bearing of, of what it is that I'm doing. I'm just looking for more dictionary references here. Get definition should be, this is going to be um, get appointment, eventually. Um, yeah. And I'll change that. Uh, so the next phase will be changing the map and the servlet to instead of mapping a string to a string, it'll be a string to an appointment book. But I want to do all of this changing first, so I have the terminology there. Um, I think that'll make it easier for me to um, then do the next phase, or at least it'll be a smaller chunk of work. Okay, run my unit test again, make sure that everything works. Okay. That's good, and then I will run the Maven Clean Verify. You know, it's funny. I was thinking, oh well, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to commit these changes, but I can't push them. But if everything passes, I can definitely push them, and I probably should. That way, I'll get the um, continuous integration on GitHub running. Oh, it looks like something failed. Uh, oh yeah, empty server contains a dictionary entries. Okay, good. Um, I will just change that one. Apply a book rest client. Uh, empty server contains no dictionaries, and so then here when I create when I call get all dictionary entries, oh, I need to change the client too. This will now um, instead of creating yeah, instead of returning an empty map of string to string. Interesting. Uh, it'll it'll throw a uh, it'll throw an exception, so it will try. Oops. And then was it a rest exception? What was thrown here actually? Uh, Uncaught exception to main. Oh, it doesn't give me the um, maybe the exact details are up here. I'm so glad we have this huge stack trace. Yeah, it's a rest exception. Okay, rest exception. Ex and I should assert that ex dot get HTTP status code equals sc not found. Oops, HTTP servlet response sc not found 404. I think that's right. No, equal to.
Nice. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you know, there's no fast way to me re for me to rerun this. I'm just going to use maybe clean verify. And <clears throat> you know that's just sort of the reality of this style of integration tests. In projects one, two, three, and four, the integration tests could all be run very easily from IntelliJ because it was just all one process that needed to be loaded. Well, now um, you have two processes, right? You have the unit test, you have the, the integration test, the test itself. Um, and then you also have the servlet, which is running off of an, off of a jetty. Um, and, ah, oh, darn it, darn it. <laughs> oh, no, now it got further and other things like that. Okay. Oh, interesting. Now it's still throwing exceptions. Test two, empty server. What did it not like? Yeah. Some exception got thrown. Caused by rest exception. Does it not? Oh, interesting. Okay, so then let's see here. I think I do want to get this working right now, though. So, oh, temp two empty server. We'll just see what those tests do. Oh, this is the IT. Oh, okay. Uh, again, this calls it with. Yeah. This one isn't so interesting. Maybe so. So should I? Replace it with an empty. No, this just isn't a valid. Um, this is this sort of isn't valid for Project Five. So yeah. So um, yeah. So I should either add a parameter which is the owner. No, I'm just going to, I think this one's pretty, that one's not very interesting anymore. Um, and oh, look, and let's see here, and then this one, no definitions throws, a point book exception. Well, that one should pass. Which one failed? Add definition. Why did that one fail? So I'm going to start up Jetty over here so I can run these in IntelliJ, because I'm not changing anything about the servlet yet. I'm just changing these tests. In this way, I don't need to run the whole clean verify. I can more quickly iterate just by running these tests one at a time. So let's see here. So add definition. This one failed before. What did it get? A rest exception. Oh, the rest exception does not print out the error code. That's lame. I should change it to do that. Um, OK, so it got had some problem. Well, I can debug, but I can't debug because I'm not running the um, jetty with a debugger flag. So I'm going to do that. Do I still have that configuration from last time? I think this is it right there, localhost 505. Oops. Let's go edit the configuration. Look at localhost 505. I want this big thing right here. Copy that to my clipboard. Now I will say maven ops. And, if you're, and as you may recall, we covered this. Um, we covered this in class uh, the other uh, on the 14th. So now, yep, Jetty is running. Is running with the debugger on. I am going to get my servlet up again. Do, 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 do. I am going to. I assume it happens in the post. I already have a breakpoint there, so I will attach the debugger. I will run my unit test again. So this is really interesting, right? This is running the unit test, which is the client, which then makes a REST call to the server. And because I'm attached to the server, the Jetty, with the debugger, I can now debug the, the server, which is running in this process over here. Right, OK. Uh, so let's see here. What doesn't it like? Owner. Oh, the owner's word. That's OK. You just change that. Okay, so that was happy. So now it's doing a get. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, owner is is word, and that's okay. Okay, is it failing here somehow? I wonder what where it's getting that. Uh, okay, so now what is it doing? It's getting. 
It's getting, oh no. Okay, is it supposed to be doing this? Interesting. Okay, so I'm just like debugging my test here, and this is the Project 4 IT. Come on, IntelliJ. Why do you always seem to put the tab that I want off screen? Um, oh, this is getting, okay, so yeah, the test here, and if I just paid attention to where it's failing. Yeah, okay, so once again, we're invoking main with no parameters, and it just should be showing all of them. Okay, ugh, ugh. Well, in order to get this to work, what do I need to do? Do I still need to put... Maybe all I need to do is put in the um, yeah, the host name, the port, and then I guess the name of the appointment. I wonder if that's going to work. Um, okay. It's good to know. I'm going to stop debugging this. Actually, no, you know, maybe so maybe what I should do now is restore this test, actually. And it's not so much empty server, but... Um, yeah, okay, no, 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 because even if I put in, I haven't created an appointment book yet, so if I go and ask for it, I should still get a 404, which makes sense, so sorry, I guess I don't want this test after all. And what I'll do here is then, instead of invoking with the word, yeah, so like, oh, actually, you know what, I don't think we need this anymore. Um, this part isn't so interesting, because again, the appointment book servlet doesn't have the the behavior of like printing all of the appointments that's something that you could print all of the um entries in the dictionary you cannot print all of the uh appointments in the appointment book that just doesn't make sense so okay we can just take that out then because i mean this is just doing what's what's important right it is um it is creating is using the command line program to create a uh well, this will be word and definition let's just change the thing this will be owner and description. Let's just do that. Um, and let's, oh yeah, let's also change the name here. So this is add appointment. Nice. And again, I'm just fixing up terminology. I, I think that's, um, I think that's important. So this will be no appointment book. Yeah. Throws rest exception. Oops, sorry. I keep using the wrong keyboard shortcut because I've been using my uh, Windows machine at work. Um, this is the owner. Uh, nice. No command line arguments. Remove all appointment books. We, so this remove all appointment books uses the delete um, uh, REST API. Oh, remove all dictionary entries. This should be rename remove all appointment books. And this is only used for testing. Um, I suppose technically the, the endpoint is there. You can call delete, but it's not really part of the assignment. Not something I'm going to test, but something that your integration tests may need. Okay. Uh, let's just do a quick tech search. Does owner appear anywhere? Oh, it does. Okay. Miss this here. Oh, wait, not owner. Um, definition. Or word. Nope. Good. That one's clean. How about this one? Uh, let's just clean up this one while we're here. Actually, before we do that, let's just run the tests again. Uh, did I change anything about the... I don't think I changed anything about the servlet, so this should work. And get it refactoring. Right? This is very common. Oh, good, that was nice and fast. It, you know, this is this is what you end up doing. Um, that you uh, you spend some time uh, molding the code. And actually, I'm kind of regretting now making that change where I um, introduced the the 404 error handler because I mean now I've had to. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, now I've had to uh, just go back and fix more tests. I probably should have done that as a separate step. So uh, live and learn. But this is why I you know, am resisting the urge to do more. All I want to do right now is change a bunch of terminology, get it back to the point where the uh, tests are running cleanly, then I'll commit and push that, and then move on to the next step. Um, again, this patience is, 
is, is how I try to avoid just getting totally stuck by making too many changes. Actually, we saw that last week in class, right, where we were doing the refactoring kata, where you know those first steps were just renaming stuff pretty easy. Oh, but then we start changing the code. Oh my gosh, that's where we got you know, bogged down on bugs and then logic errors and uh, you know tests that were insufficient. So um, this is why it's good to work in small steps. Good, we're all uh, we're passing now. So before uh, I should go through and where was that? That was in the Rust client integration test. Let's go find some more um, words and stuff. Yeah. So this is define one word is probably create um, create new appointment. I'm just gonna go through and change all this uh, and test word. I'm just gonna call this owner. Oops. Owner, test owner, and this will be description, test description, and then uh, empty word throws exception. I guess this would be empty, this would be non existent, um, non existent appointment book. Existent appointment book. Did I spell existent wrong? I must have. Eh. ENT. There we go. I, I knew it was misspelled because it had a little gray underline underneath it. Okay. This is all looking better. Okay, I'll run the test one more time just to make sure, but then I think I'm ready to commit. As a matter of fact, I'll proactively create my commit message. Um, begin morphing the uh, dictionary, little d dictionary application into an appointment book application by renaming a bunch of uh well a bunch of fields and methods to use the appointment book terminology and again you know i'm doing this because i think this code will be easier to work with if it's using the appropriate terminology otherwise you'll have to always be remembering oh the word corresponds to the owner the uh, the uh, description to the definition or definition to the description um you know why introduce all that cognitive overload or cognitive load when you can just you know change it now and do that first. And it kind of reminds, or again, it reminds me of you know how this uh, whole application works. Okay, push that up to GitHub and let the continuous integration run it there. Okay, now let's make a bigger change to our uh, to our code base. And this one will you know start making code and then things won't compile for a while until we can get everything um, squared away. And actually, this will probably take us a while to change a lot of classes, get everything working. Um, but we'll see how a change in one part of the code just propagates to the rest. So uh, I can't find the servlet. <laughs> it's always the last place that you look. Um, so here, I want to change instead of the dictionary. Actually, I forgot to rename this. This will now be the appointment books. Books? Yeah, appointment books. We'll just call it that. Appointment books. And what this will be is instead of a map of a string to a string, now this will be a map to the appointment book. Oh, I don't have an appointment book class in this project. Okay. I will go, I do have one in, oops, I do have one in uh, over here. So let's go find, I want my appointment book and my appointment and my appointment book and probably my text server, my text parser, but I'll get there later. I definitely want these two classes over my other project. So this is this is from my project one, uh, my regular appointment book. I need to then copy appointment and appointment book over into the new Maven project. So I'll just copy these to the clipboard, and then I will go back over to my servlet. I'll go find where they where it lives. There it is here. Now again, I'm in my appointment book dash web. All right. So before I was in my plain old appointment book, now I'm appointment book dash web. And I'm going to paste those two things here. Copy these files. Awesome. And now I've got my appointment and my appointment book. I think everything's in the right package. Uh, nice. You know, uh, if I had meaningful unit tests, I'd probably also copy those over. Might as well. 
Um, oh yeah, right, a bunch of stuff isn't uh, implemented, including the description, but that's okay. I'll get that stuff working later. Now I can have my appointment book right here. Nice. And, and notice over on the right, there's a whole bunch of red now, a bunch of things have, uh, yep, have popped up. So let's start fixing them. So um, let's see here, F2 brings into the next error. Okay, so here I am, I'm just my put method, yeah, my post method. I get the owner in the description. Um, here I want to, uh, instead of just putting it in the description, I want to uh, get the appointment book. So I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Oh, what I'm going to do? Maybe. Um, I want to get the appointment book. So uh, ultimately, let's see here. I want, to, I want to get the appointment book. And I want to get it from appointment books. Get, I think, can I use the compute? So I, I oh, yeah, compute if absent. I like that. So I'm going to look it up by its owner. And then what does this take? A function, which takes the string and creates a new appointment, or, you know, create, uh, this apply method here. Sorry. <clears throat> um, and actually, you can learn about the function interface in the uh, the Lambdas um, lecture, which was a couple weeks ago, if this isn't familiar to you. Um, and so now, basically what this does is it says, hey, if there isn't already an entry in the map uh, associated with the key owner, then, then create a, a new object for that. And so we'll do that by saying new appointment book um, for the owner. Ooh, and the owner here is that string that's passed in. Um, this is kind of ugly syntax. So, oops, actually seems to be a return. And then <coughs> semicolon there. I can replace that with a method reference. Ooh, look at that. And so now the, uh, that's, Nice and compact, especially if I get rid of this. Great, so I think that ought to create a new appointment book. And then uh, I don't need to put, and that will also do a put automatically because we did the compute if absent. And now we just need to say book.add appointment, new appointment. Uh, oh, and I guess I need to provide it with the, um, with the description of the appointment, which I don't have right now. So I can pass that in. I can create that constructor and uh, the description, and I'll put that in a description field there. And uh, I know I need to set the get, I need to, uh, let's go ahead and do it. I was going to say, should I just leave this in the implement, an implement state? No. <laughs> you know, you've already done that, and so you, you, know, you know what it means there. I'm not going to implement uh, get, uh, get begin time string, get end string. Um, you all know how to do that. You've done that before. Okay, so now this is happier. So now in my post method, I go and I, uh, yeah, I go and I read the stuff from the parameters, and then I kind of want to extract this into a method, actually. Um, even though it's only two lines, I think this is one of those cases where I think it'll be easier to read. Um, where's method? Method. Um, I'm going to call it uh, add appointment. Nice. And that way, actually, I'm going to call it add appointment to book. I don't know. I, I think this just makes it a little bit more clear. Um, again, expressing the intent of the, of the of the code, just doing it this way. And you can imagine as you add more and more parameters, I'm not going to do that here, as you add more and more parameters um, that are supported, like the begin time and the begin end time and everything like that, you'll just, you'll just add them there. Okay. Uh, this is nice. There are still some errors left, though, so I'll keep going. Uh, ah, right. So now, write appointment book. Uh, oops, this isn't the word anymore. I believe this is the owner. Um, rename all occurrences? Oh, I see. Um, now it's reading the code occurrences to owner. Um, and now this isn't going to return oh, a definition. This is going to return an appointment book. Yeah, let's call it book. And then this is going to be um, change book type appointment book. Great. You see how easy IntelliJ makes it to change all this stuff, right? It's just being a couple of key swipes instead of lots of typing. Uh, okay, then.
Oh, now things are getting interesting. Okay, so book doesn't exist, we get a not found. If it does, then I want to use the text dumper. Um, okay, so the word definition is not a map anymore. Um, I want to pass the text dumper a uh, an appointment book. And it's got to change there. So let's see here. Cast argument change first parameter of method dump to appointment. That looks good. And I don't want to call it dictionary. I want to call it a, a book. I'll refactor that. Yay. Thanks for refactoring. Uh, I think I need to, uh, that won't compile. I'll need to go back and fix that. But um, IntelliJ will tell me that pretty shortly. Ah, OK, and here's a text dumper. Um, and this thing now dumps uh, an appointment book. Oh, write all dictionary entries. Look, this isn't used anymore. So I'm just going to uh, delete it, save delete, and that will see if it is used any place. It is not. Um, sure, search for it, didn't find anything, and it deleted it. So that's good. Because that, that code wasn't used anymore, right? That code used to be called up in that place where I removed, um, where, where I changed it to call, from calling that method to returning the 404. So it's not used anymore, which is good, because that code was broken now. And I don't need to make it work, because I don't need it. And then finally, oh yeah, yeah, get appointment needs to be changed to uh, return appointment book. And I can do that here. Nice. Now this will be called in places that will be broken. But, oh, and I see, is he probably even telling me that? Mm, nope. Okay. Okay, so this class is happy. It's got a couple of warnings. What are those warnings? Blank line will be ignored. That's not terribly interesting. Okay, I'm not worried about that. Now let's go and run the uh, the tests again. Point the book servlet texts. Oh, uh, yeah, I meant to run all of them. I just ran one of them. Okay, well, it can't compile anyway. Um, okay, here we are in our text dumper, and no big surprise, uh, it doesn't work. I'm going to go... Um, Go grab my text dumper from my project one. I think just out of the box, I think that'll work pretty well. So let me go find the other text dumper. And this is the one from appointment book. Ooh, right there, went right to it. Um, oh yeah, this is nice. It just prints the appointment name. Okay, well, I'll have to add description also. Not the end of the world. I think we can do that pretty easily. So yeah, I like this implementation better. So I'm just going to copy this. I could copy the whole class maybe, I don't know. Um, text dumper. Well, it's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? That's kind of interesting. Oh, huh. You know what? Actually, I, I kind of like this right here, so I'm just going to re-implement this. And I'm thinking here... Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I am going to... Yeah. Um, nah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like what's a quick and dirty text dumper that will work. Um, probably will be good enough for these tests to basically do the following. So instead of iterating over every book in the entry set, we'll uh, iterate over every appointment um, in the uh, appointment in the book dot get appointments. Nice. And then, oops, uh, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to print out the book.getOwner name and then appointment. Dot. So again, this is not what you should do. You already have a perfectly fine working text number. I don't. I just want something quick and dirty that I think is going to work. I think this will work just fine. Those two related problems. <coughs> oh, a REST client now. Okay. Wow. Okay. Th this is pretty pervasive code that uh, that needs to be updated and this is what happens when you make you know kind of big changes to uh to refactoring nothing wrong with it it just takes a while to work through all the problems so i changed my um text dumper i also need to change my text parser in here um the same thing okay this isn't going to return a uh oh interesting i don't have them implementing the interfaces and that's probably why um it didn't compile, which is which is fine. Implements um, uh, appointment book dumper of appointment. Oops, of appointment. 
Oh, what doesn't it like? I thought it would like that. No, 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 no. Oh, appointment book. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Because and now look, this implements this this um, method. IntelliJ knows that this thing overrides something. Although it's probably complaining they don't have the annotation, and I should. Always good practice. Okay. Nice. Uh, similarly, we want text parser to implement appointment book parser of appointment book. And now it's complaining that this thing has the wrong return type, again, as it should. So we just want to make this create an appointment book instead. And we want it to override. We want to do an at override. And now we're going to read each line. Um, we're going to matches as the owner and then this is the description and we're not creating a map anymore we're creating an appointment book so oh oh bother yeah whatever it, here again um we'll just yeah, we'll just create return the first one um i guess we'll need to create okay we need to create a new appointment book. Again, this isn't... You won't have to do this. This is just me sort of filling in all the blanks so I can have enough of a project that it'll work. Um, book dot... Oops. Dot add appointment. And new appointment with a description of description. Sweet. And then return the appointment book. Um, and I think here... Oh, what does it like? For statement does not loop. That's weird. I wonder why it says that. Oh, okay. No, I wonder, I wonder why. Does it say, is this dead code or something? Because, okay, yeah, whatever, fine. Because basically, because I'm, I have, a, I have the bot, because I always return, so either I throw, the only way to exit this for loop is through this throw or for this return. So I think basically what it's saying is that, hey, this, this, uh, incrementer um, in the for loop will never be invoked because uh, it never actually will have a chance to go back up again because it will immediately return. Fine. Um, and if it does get down here, then just return null or something. Yeah, we'll see. Again, right now, sort of like my goal is to get things to work. I'll rely on my unit test to tell me whether or not some of these are the right decisions. Um, I'm just trying to get everything a pile, and then that will help me. Um, understand. Okay. Uh, now I'm over in my client. Okay. So uh, that was my server side. And I kind of wish I could test that, but I can't because it's all one big project. So I think I'm okay on the, the server side. Now I need to go and propagate these changes to the client side. So now my REST client, oh, it looks like I found more places I didn't rename. That's fine. Um, so I'll get all dictionary entries. Okay. This, this thing goes away, right? I don't, oh uh, yeah, this is the thing I don't really like very much. So... What do I want to do? I'm just going to have this for right now. I'm just going to have this return an empty appointment book. I think. Yeah, let's have a return null and see what happens. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is the thing. Yeah. This isn't supported anymore. So I should really, I should really get rid of this. But. We'll see. Um, oh, my pretty printer. I probably need to change that to be to take a, a dictionary also. Um, not dictionary, an appointment book. Implements appointment book dumper. And I don't know. I'm just I'm just doing this so I'll, I can I'll be sure to dump the right things. Um, and now this will dump a, an appointment book. Let's be called book. And then I guess I don't need that format word count anymore. That's not very interesting. And now it's going to iterate over all of the, um, these will be appointments. Oops, appointment. And this will be an appointment in book dot get appointments and then uh, oh that's interesting 
I'll just I'll just reuse this. Why not? Um, this is a format appointment, I guess. And not the word in the value. This will be the owner and the and the description. Again, you would use your real pretty printer that you developed in Project Three for this. Um, I'm just I, I guess something to work here because my code is not as complete as yours is. Uh, oops, this is a, this is booked out appointment owner, and this is appointment docket description. Nice, nice, nice. It's probably time he's not overwriting it. Yes. Okay. I'm just getting code to compile at this point, and oh look, I don't need this anymore, so I can just delete it. Thank you. Rest client still isn't happy. It's still got one more error. And actually, I'm sure oh, all, all this stuff needs to get fixed. Okay, wow, there's like a lot here. So get definition of word is not going to be get appointment book for the owner. Um, just the code occurrences, please. And, you know, yeah, you should go and uh, update the comments, but you don't need to see me do that. Okay, this actually puts the owner in, and it's going to parse that, and it's going to return uh, text parser.parse. And now this is going to return an appointment book. So many things are broken. Okay, add dictionary entry is going to be add appointment. Yeah, so there are some things that we could have also that I you know, clearly that I missed in the first refactoring, and that's okay. Um, oh, interesting. So this is going to be owner, and <coughs> you know I don't want this to be definition. I want um, I want this to be the appointment object. So the um, the appointment book REST client is meant to provide what I call a fluent API, sort of a Java API, over the REST API. And so I want it to take the, the class types, like appointment and appointment book, even though it's implementation. What we'll do here is instead of definition, we'll call this description. And then uh, we'll create a local variable here, which is appointment on description. And and the reason is is that I want the outermost code, the code that calls this, things like the main method, to use the appointment objects um, and not to be bothered with sort of like the lower level things like the string of the description. Because otherwise, as you'll add more things, you'll end up with a method that has like you know, six different um, arguments, and that's you know not is e that's not near that are all strings. <laughs> that's not nearly as easy to work with as uh, the appointment object. Okay, as you can see, yep, there are problems. Like every place that uses this code, we change the signature without changing the callers, which I could have done actually, and probably should have. I want to have another opportunity to do so. Looks like I won't because all this other stuff passes. Uh, oh, this will be appointment books. I'll just rename that since I see it here. No big deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's go find some more. Here again, we're just on the hunt for things that don't compile. And luckily, IntelliJ makes it really easy to find all this stuff. Okay. Uh, here I am in the integration test. I call uh, get appointment book. This doesn't create a definition anymore. Or it doesn't have a definition. This has an appointment book. And um, this isn't the definition. This should be the book. And we should assert that book dot get uh, owner. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, here, um, this is here that creates a new appointment. Ugh, new, yeah, it creates a new appointment. Um, oh, and it needs to have not just the description. It needs to have uh, an appointment here now. So let's say new appointment for the description. And now I get the appointment book. So then I need to go get the uh, the appointment associated with the appointment book. And I'll just, um, I'll cheat a little bit here. This isn't the most resilient of uh, unit tests, but it will uh, probably work for the time being. And actually when I get the book, I want to assert that the uh, book dot get owner name equals to owner to equals to the owner name and then I'm going to assert that the appointment uh, get description equals to description 
Nice. Okay, right, this is just again morphing the application. I haven't really, I, I haven't changed that much actually. But I hope as what you're seeing is that we're now using the language of the appointment book more. And we're using the classes from the appointment book, and this is a big first step. Then, because after we have all this stuff working, then it's just a matter of you know adding support for you know putting the beginning and end times in there, and then you've also got to add the uh, the searching capabilities. Right. So there's um, but this is a big, you know, first uh, refactoring step that needs to be done. Um, and we'll have tests that validate that, you know, all of this stuff works. But all we're really doing is changing the names of a bunch of things and then actually just doing that, changing the names of a bunch of things and then changing the internal implementation, which then also, you know, bleeds over into the, um, the, the client API, which is which is fine and intentional It'll make the clients easier to work with. OK. So here, uh, oh, um, another place where um, we need to call uh, at appointment with, um, instead of just two strings, we'll just say new appointment here. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, there's still something that is failing. Oh, it says no errors found in this file. Great. Here we are in our main method. This also needs to get um, cleaned up. Uh, okay, so let's see here. If word is null... And I don't know what it's going to do exactly. We'll just leave it there for the time being. If definition is null, then we print, we pretty print the um, the one appointment. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, and now uh, it's looking for, ah, okay. Get appointment book. So this isn't word anymore. This is owner. And here I want to put this into a variable. I'm going to call it appointment book. There's book. And then here I want to get that uh, get appointments iterator next. I think that oops. What does format appointment take? Oh, well, it's not exactly what I wanted. Um, hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess okay. So this isn't get description. Uh, it's kinda long. I'm gonna put that into a variable now. Actually I should probably just put this into a variable. Um, I'm gonna call it appointment. And uh, I'm gonna change this from format appointment to format appointment description. Just so it's clear. Nice. Okay. Um, here I'm going to pass in a new appointment instead of a new appointment book. Oops, and definition should be description. And again, this is all this is passed in the command line, right? Because we're in the main method now. And, oh, and by the way, I think I mentioned this in class while I was reiterated. I think we might need to rename project four to project five in order to submit. I can't remember. Uh, so just don't be surprised if you try to submit and it's like, oh, I can't submit a Project uh, 4 class. So that, and that was a bug on my part, sorry. But you can use the rename. You can just say refactor rename here and that'll rename the class. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. This is, this is now working. Uh, I bet I have some more things to fix, but let's go through and go back to our unit tests and just sort of see how we're doing. Oh, interesting. We didn't change anything about our unit tests. I'm surprised by that. No, I can't be right. Okay, there you go. No, oh, there's some more things that aren't working. Um, dictionary as text. I don't know what that means. How do we use this? Oh, okay. This is when... Okay, so this pretty this is text dumps. Okay, so we want uh, we'll just call it um, we'll call it appointment book as text, and it should take an appointment now. Okay, appointment book. That would be a big change. That's okay. Yep. Now this is happier. And this thing is an appointment book now. Oh, it's called book. And, oh, equal to. 
that'll be that probably won't work because I can't compare um, appointment books so I'll seem to fix that and then let's see here this is uh, we'll just create a simple um, appointment book appointment book book equals new appointment book and let's see here I guess I do want the owner name and I'll just create that variable I'll just call it test oops test owner and then I'll say book add appointment new appointment with description and I will not I don't want to there you go I want to create a local variable called description equals test description and I'll move that up a line so it's a little I think it's a little easier to read that way okay so now okay get all dictionary entries oh this is a get all dictionary entries yeah I don't there's no equivalent to this you know what okay I'm, I'm gonna get rid of this test I think I think it's just time I don't right this thing will just this has no meaning for the uh, for the real assignment. Okay. Oh, so I don't need this at all. Nah, I don't like that. Okay. I wonder why I don't have a more. Oh, this is okay. This is the Makito test for the client. Uh. Oh well, get all dictionary entries. Well, I should probably just change this to uh, get appointment book for owner. And this equal to is not going to work because... Should I, make a, should I make a pass now? I don't know. I'm just focusing on getting things to compile. Um, and it won't, it won't work because I haven't implemented the equals method on appointment book. So it's going to have one instance of appointment book here and another instance of an appointment book, which is... Yeah, returned by by this text, um, and well, okay. So here's what I can do. Um, I'm just going to I am going to fix it now. Oops. I'm going to extract a variable here called book two, and I'm just going to assert that book two that get an owner name equals well the expected owner name I guess, and then book two. Um, dot uh, get appointments dot enter dot next dot get description equals to description. I think that'll work. At least I think it's a correct test. Okay, and then text dumper parser test. Oh, I guess I do have tests for the uh, dumper and parser. Oh, don't know how much I care. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this one. Because this was just my, my hokey dumper and parser for this project. Um, I am not interested in validating that. Cause, and certainly you aren't because you have better tests that you wrote yourself. So I'll just delete this one. I'm sorry, there's a delete. And I will do a safe delete and look for usages. No problem there. Okay. Sweet. Um, let me run my tests again. Okay, method is not implemented yet. Oh, add appointment is implemented yet? That's that's lame. Okay, uh, cool, cool, no problem there. Um, and then I'll just have a private final list of appointments. Sure, appointments. Let me import this. Uh, equals new array list. Nice, and then get appointments is this dot appointments dot add appoint. Oh no, wait, sorry. Um, get return this to appointments, and that add. Oops. Return this to appointments, and then this is going to this dot appointments dot add appointment. Okay, let's try this again. I assume this for yeah, blue for the same reason. Still failing. This is why we have unit tests, right? Now let's see here. 
expected test description, but it was, oh, the two-string of the entire appointment book. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, clearly this isn't, <laughs> this is the right, uh, right test here. So we'll just say this is appointment and we'll have uh, appointment dot get owner name equals to owner name and we'll have appointment dot, we'll get the appointments dot iter dot next dot get description equals to the description. And then why did this one fail? Oh, okay, yeah, this is probably some place where we, yeah, this is get all dictionary entries. I think this test is bogus now. Like again, we, we don't care about get all dictionary entries. So I'm just gonna delete this one. And I realized I had, yeah, I, I just fixed that one up a minute ago, it's okay. There we go. Cool. The unit tests I'll pass. Let's see about the integration tests. I'm going to run it first from here. I'm sure there'll be lots of things in the integration test to pass, uh, to, fa to, pass to, uh, to fix. But I'll run it first from this and then of running Jetty and running the tests against it. <laughs> so, you know, again, while we're waiting for this, just want to reiterate what we did here. We, we spent a goodly long time just changing the code so that it can use the appointment and appointment book classes um, instead of the uh, of the map API. And this is a big part of, whoa, that worked. Um, this is a big part of refactoring. Right, where we're going through and introducing a more fluent API that's easier to work with, that better describes the data that we're working with. Um, and, and I suppose, you know, now that I talk through it all, yeah, I could have done this out of the box, but this is a big part of the lesson that I want you to learn. And I think some of you have already tried to, you know, do this yourself, or at least thought about doing it yourself. Um, here, uh, you know, we can see an approach to it. This is how I've done it. Wow. Okay, that worked. Um, that was that was kind of neat. Uh, and so then here, uh, okay, use the appointment and appointment book classes, classes in the servlet and the, uh, the, well, I'll just say this in the appointment book servlet and appointment book rest client classes. This will make it easier to uh, add <laughs> more functionality for Project 5. <coughs> nice. Okay, so that was, yeah, that was kind of a, uh, again, yeah, that was kind of a blur. I know it went fa by fast, but you know, let's just take a, a look back at what we did. Um, first of all, we looked at the, uh, I don't have the servlet up anymore. Fair enough, get rid of our text dumper. Uh, here's a servlet test, let me just quick navigate to the servlet. Servlet, my book servlet. Okay. We started out by just changing the data structure the servlet uses to uh, store the appointments, uh, change it from a string to an appointment book. And then they had this huge ripple effect, um, which is what we intended, right? So once the servlet starts using a more concrete type, which is what we want, because it'll be easier to do things like add support for the begin time and the end time, um, uh, it will... Uh, you know, it'll be able to use like the real appointment book class. And actually now you can use, you know, reuse your text dumper and your text parser and your pretty printer. So I mean, there are lots of advantages here, right? And it'll help you go faster. You don't need to like rewrite all of this stuff. But in order to get there, yeah, you had to, it to propagate this change through a number of places and just some logic that no longer made sense. So like in the do get, right? Now we have to do some more stuff. And by the way, this probably isn't complete, right? But this is just sort of where we're at right now. Um, 
And then the same thing for the do post, right? You have to do the same HTTP stuff that we did before, make sure that there was an, an owner description provided on the um, on the wire, on the HTTP request. Um, but now we get to use the uh, appointment book uh, API to uh, you know create a new appointment with a description as opposed to just storing everything in strings. And so, and then also on the client side, we used, um, let's see here, that'd probably be in the get method. Yeah, when we write the appointment book, we used the you know the text dumper that then actually this would be your text dumper right that that uh, does the the rich format of uh, of, of all that stuff. Um, and then it also impacted on the client side. So again, on the the REST client, um, we want this code to instead of just using strings to use those the rich APIs, use the appointment and appointment book class. We to change all of that. Uh, oh, this get all dictionaries is still here. I, 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 I don't think I want that anymore. So let's see where this is used. Um, yeah, let's just take this out because uh, it's just not well implemented. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, so let's see here. This can go away here. And also in here. Yeah, I'm just going to like, um, should be an error message instead. System dot error dot print line. Um, owner is required. Something like that. And by the way, um, you know, of course, this command line parsing is insufficient because we have a very simple command line, but you've already demonstrated in projects one through four that you can implement command line parsing. So I'm not going to add anything here or I'm not, I'm not going to do anything at this time. Um, that's cool. OK, so now get all dictionaries is, uh, is great because no one's using it anymore. So we'll just do a safe delete. This might also have some might also create some dead code in the servlet. Um, because now in the get, yeah, interesting. What does the delete do? It still does the same thing. It just clears the appointment books. Um, in the get, oh yeah, I guess here if owner equals null, then we get a 404, which is fine. Okay, so let's let's run the test again now that I've changed that. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, Well, we're waiting for that. I think the last thing that I want to talk to you, I'm not going to show you how to do it because that's part of the assignment. It's like, where do you go from here? Okay, great. You know, hey, it would be perfectly reasonable for you to just like take my code and just like copy it, you know, the code that we've written just here right now and just copy it right into yours. You probably, haven't, if you haven't changed your project five already, just you know, go ahead and do that. I don't know nothing wrong with it. I've shared all this code with you on GitHub. Um, but like, where do you go next? I mean, I think what I would do is. Uh, is, is go through and start with the unit tests for the servlet. And um, after description, start with, you know, begin time and then pass that in to the servlet and have that propagate all the way through the system. So probably one thing you're going to run into, if you reuse your appointment class, you very likely have a bunch of required arguments in the constructor. Well, for the meantime, you might need to loosen those requirements um, or just pass in dummy data uh, in order to get things to work. And then gradually add support for, you know, posting and round tripping the uh, the begin time and the, the end time. Um, and uh, and then implement functionality like like search. So by no means are you done, but my goal here was to, you know, give you enough to get started. Uh, or at least what I, I hope is enough to you know, overcome that first hurdle, which is, oh my gosh, how do I take the dictionary application and turn it into the appointment book application? So I think with that, um, what did I do here? I removed the um, the get all dictionaries, get all dictionary entries method. From the appointment book rest client, appointment book rest client, uh, because it isn't relevant to project five. Okay, 
Awesome. Oops. Okay, then. I think that's everything that I wanted to show you today. So um, this was a, an extra bonus. I hope it helps you get started. I know that, um, you know, we're... we're Things are going faster at this point in the course than I'd like. We, when we lost week two, it really impacted everything else. I think we can catch up, um, and you've still got uh, you know another couple of weeks of Project 5 done. But Project 6, we're going to start seeing that uh, on, on class this week because uh, we don't have all that much time left, all things considered. So um, I hope we can stay focused. Um, and please let me know if you have any questions. Please reach out in Slack. Um, uh, posting to the, 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 the class's channel will um, not only make your question more visible to everybody else, but more likely to get you a response faster from one of your peers uh, before I can weigh in. But you know, let me know how it goes, um, and uh, I, ho I hope that you know this ends up being a, uh, a fun assignment for you. You do get to work with very advanced concepts like well, REST and web applications, but also Mojito, and just you know, seeing a more complex application than uh, than you've worked with before in the course. Hope everybody has a great day and uh, a great weekend, depending on when you watch this, and I will see you later. Thanks.